uh, Bob Proctor talks about uh, early on in, in uh, Empowered to Have, or no, it was the, the Power to Have It All. It was a seven CD series and I'd listened to it while I was mechanicking. So Isogenics showed up, I got the book, Science of Getting Rich. On the back end, of, on the back of that book was Bob Proctor's picture. He had the book put back into print. And uh, then I um, acquired some CDs from Bob Proctor and I listened to him while I was fixing cars. Um, can't remember if I had a CD player on the bench that I could have, have a plank, hard to hear in the shop, but uh, I definitely listened to them in the customer's cars while I was fixing them inside the car, going on test drives. And I was listening to them at home. There was also a VHS tape that I had of Bob Proctor. And I just remember him saying that, you know, there's a biological rhythm. And there's times when we don't have control over that biological rhythm where you just don't feel good for whatever reason. It could be allergies, something you ate, the, the gravity of, you know, uh, what is it? When the tide, you know how the tide works off the gravity of wherever the moon is, something like that. You know, all those could play a factor in why we feel the way we feel at any given moment. Um, what I love about isogenics is that I feel 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time, I feel great now because of the nutrition and the cleanse I'm cleansing today. I need a reset. I need a really good 24 to 48 hour cleanse. I'm going to decide tomorrow morning if I'll keep going. Um, that's a good reset for me if I just can't seem to bounce out of it. Um, but I, I don't feel like talking this morning. Like this morning, I just want to stay asleep. I don't really want to sleep. I just, I'm in that, like, I don't want to talk. Don't talk to me this morning. I get the mug that says, don't talk to me. I haven't had my coffee yet. Right. Um, that's a biological rhythm for me. It's, it's very rare that those occasions happen. They happen. They don't happen nearly as often as they used to. I used to be that way 90% of the time. Now I'm that way maybe 10% of the time. So um, one of, today's one of those mornings. I'm just going to be transparent with you. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be, and I don't think I want to be, not at this point. Um, but I'm excited to be here. And I find, and I, so I reach for things and run things through my mind to be grateful for. Rather than feeding that downward entropy that biological rhythm when it's in a down rather than try to take it on and box with it just trying to find things that i'm grateful for um and it, i don't necessarily have to say well i'm grateful for the days that i feel good that would be kind of like boxing with it um just grateful you know i'm just i'm very grateful for my life for the opportunity to be alive and to for sure to be able to experience my life in the way that i have for the last 15 years wow i'm so grateful for that right? It doesn't necessarily take the biological dip away. If it's a biological rhythm rather than just in a bad mood because something happened, then you're not necessarily going to take it away. I, I, I took two e-shots this morning. I've not even been away for an hour and I've taken two already and like hoping that that kicks something in, in a little bit, but there's just, I don't know, maybe it's allergies or something. maybe it was driving for you know, 14 hours and less than three days. Um, whatever the case, but I, I'm still happy. I'm still grateful. Um, so uh, just throwing that out there for what it's worth, um, you're going to feel that way. You're going to have that. And, and hopefully as you're committed to this and you discipline your mind and you find these maxims that you can run through your mind, you have less and less of those and you don't stay in them as long. Some people live their whole life there, you know, and, and they're kind of addicted to those emotions, you know, um, but they're not serving them in a way that's blessing their lives with things to be grateful for. Do you see the difference? You could be addicted to those emotions, but they don't give you the blessings and lives that serve you or other people. They're not creating progress. Um, so we can be addicted to a lot of things that aren't necessarily good for us and, and producing for us the results that we would love to have in our lives. Um, <clears throat> that's a pretty tough place to be. I remember listening to uh, Napoleon Hill, Outwitting the Devil. That's a great book. It, it was a book that wasn't published until after he died. Because back then, the, the things that he says in there would not have been politically correct, I guess even though there was less political correctness back then, but 
um, Outwitting the Devil. It's a great book. And, uh, you know, I don't even know what I brought that up for. Somebody must need to read that book. But, um, you know, uh, again, I lost my train of thought of why I was bringing that up and what the point was. But it's just a world of entropy and, and uh, you know, psychological reasons. I think it was the, uh, oh, he said when you're in that groove, when you're in that groove where you love the emotions of being a pessimist, he says that you're formatically sealed there. <laughs> you're, you're not gonna pull yourself out of that. It's impossible. I don't think it's impossible. And I think he might allude to it somewhere down the road in that book that um, maybe it is possible. There's some things that I think in, not, in a non-judgmental way, but just through perception and, and, and judgment, um, perceiving things. My parents, there's some things that I could not get my parents to do that I would feel would serve them better because I learned them and to try and get my parents to do those things. Again, not in an unrighteous or disrespectful way, but I can see how when the groove is so deep and so set, pretty tough to get out of it, if not impossible. <laughs> In some cases, I, I, it doesn't mean I would give up on my parents if I was so set on helping them to see the light with something that I wouldn't give up, but um, I don't want to take on that challenge, you know, in some areas. Um, but I would take on the optimistic viewpoint of being able to pull somebody out of that one way or another. But it would take a big chunk of my life and my attention and my focus, which probably isn't the best place for, you know, to serve me. Um, so what do they say? You have to pick and choose your battles. Um, and it wasn't that big. I, I, and I'm just using that as an example because I think in some way I'm kind of using that as an abstract example right now. Um, so anyway, and, and the reason, reason somebody wouldn't be able to be moved out of that rut is because they don't want to be. They choose not to. But what if they chose to be out of that rut? Then they can start working towards that end, right? And start moving in that direction. How far they would get, that would remain up to the person and how much time they have left and, and how much time and commitment they put into it. But if it, what is it? Have an argument with somebody against their will and they're of the same opinion still. I won't choose those battles. I don't want to try to take somebody out of a rut that they want and they're not wanting to be out of that rut. I won't waste my time with my business. That Remember we talked about that not too long ago and I think it was some ahas for a lot of people um, about, it was something about not waiting around for people, you know, and moving on. Remember, I, I can't remember exactly the conversation or, or the principle that was, was being brought up there. I remember it being a lot of uh, uh, aha for a big aha for some people um, that would probably add to that conversation and maybe not complete it, but add to it that why would you spend time trying to get somebody to, to live a certain way that doesn't want to choose to live that way. And I won't do it. I know within a couple of weeks of working with a new customer, somebody that I've enrolled, that's what the conversation was around not too long ago that we had, where I know within, it doesn't mean I give up on that person or I close the door to them, but I can judge on this is going to go nowhere. <laughs> and some people will ignore that and keep trying to pull that person along and waiting for them and putting their eggs in that basket. I won't because it's a business and I don't have time for that. Does that remember that conversation, you guys? So... Um, I'll move on to the next person because it's a business and I've got to build the business and I've got to support my family and accomplish the goals and dreams that we have. And I don't have time to go with somebody against their will. Again, that doesn't mean I don't extend an invitation and, and, and you know, check in maybe every once in a while and absolutely answer the phone when they call me. Some people would take that as, I'm not even going to answer the call because that person's calling me. I already gave them their shot and they didn't listen to me, right? No, I would never do that. Do I, have I ever done that? I would like to think that I never do that. Um, I would answer the phone, all right? Does that make sense? That kind of not completes that conversation, but maybe we'll give some 
resolve to some unresolved feelings that people might have had. Of, I can't move on to the next person. Okay. All right. So um, happy Monday morning, you guys. For someone that doesn't feel like talking, man, I'm talking. Um, get in the groove, I, Dave. It gets you in the groove, doesn't it? It's that enthusiasm where all of a sudden it just wants to go through you, that energy. Um, I do want to finish from this chapter in the other book. There's about a page and a half. I'm just going to read through it very quickly. And before I do, I, I, there's some things that I wrote down that might maybe help. Why is Dave reading from that book? Why is he all of a sudden going spiritual on us? I've always been spiritual on you. <laughs> I've always been quote unquote religious on you because religion is philosophy. They're synonymous and there has to be a spiritual side to your philosophy. It's like Bob Proctor says, you might have a good program, but if it's lacking spirituality, then it's incomplete. So <clears throat> in a world, uh, this is just some things that I wrote down and I don't even know how they'll fit right here, but I'm just going to change gears in a world of entropy, that downward pull, right? Where, it's easier to not than it is easier to 100% of the time. It's easier to not. Um, it, would it, 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 let me just preface that, though. It wouldn't have been easier for me to just stay in bed and not do this presentation this morning, not do this Zoom. To not do it would not have been easier for me, even though my physical body and maybe my brain at this moment, the downward you know, biological rhythm, doesn't want to do what I'm doing right now, it would not have been easier for me to stay in bed. So in a world of entropy, it's easier to self betray when, and this is why, when you don't have a powerful ideal to live by. It's easier to self betray when you don't have a powerful ideal to live by. So if we go to, I must let me pull it up. Connect the iPad. Oh, it's not quite in. Could you repeat that brilliant sentence one more time? Is he uh, the self betray yeah, sentence? Yeah, in a world of entropy, I would look up the word entropy, you guys. In a world of entropy, it's easier to self betray when you don't have a powerful ideal to live by. Um, so, Uh, this was just my scratch for me here this morning, chicken scratch. Um, oh, whoops, that's not what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I need to, instead of toggling through those, get another one of these made. So it's easier to justify and self-betray when you don't have a powerful why, a powerful ideal. That ideal is going to come from your perspective, your religion your spiritual ideas, your, your philosophy. Um, and that's, we frame up these ideals. Our ideal world comes around the beliefs. The only way you can frame up your ideal, whether you do it consciously or subconsciously, is through the beliefs that we have. So if we're missing that spiritual part of who we are and the connection that we have to that spirituality, then it, 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 it would be more based in the physical world, which is in a constant state of change, always. And it doesn't necessarily mean progress with that change. Um, Tony Robbins, I was listening to him a couple days ago, the 30 minutes for the next 30 years of your life. He said, change is automatic, progress isn't. That's a powerful maxim to, to remember. Change is automatic. <laughs> Progress isn't, all right? So what's gonna cause me to continue to progress in the physical world of downward entropy that is gonna decay? And I'm getting some background noise from somebody. Let's just, uh, can you make sure you're muted out, you guys? So we don't get that annoying noise. Um, <clears throat> when, when, the, when the entropy and the decay of the world and when man, kind, men and women let you down, when corporations let you down, when governments let you down, when individuals let you down, when religious leaders let you down, because we're in this world of decay 
and fallibility. How do you continue to pro progress in a world like that? How do you continue to stay up? How do you continue to stay enthusiastic? How do you continue to stay focused? What's the overall goal that's a bigger goal than the, what's in this physical world? What if isogenics was to leave tomorrow? What if it was to be shut down? What if, uh, you know, what if uh, um, this whole quarantine thing had shut isogenics down and it didn't come back? Then did my world fall apart because of that? Does my identity fall apart because of that? Or am I still just as built on a rock, on a foundation that can't be moved? And that goes to the spiritual side. Yeah, we're, we're working goals and a vision and a blueprint around this physical world. But this, everything about this world 100 years from now is not going to be the same. Is there even going to be any semblance of what this world has to offer right now? Maybe. Right? But I... You know, Job says, though worms, for as in Adam, all die. So let's see. Um, uh, he talks about, we'll get to it because I'm going to read it. Anyways, he talks about death. Even though death and worms are going to eat my, my body, even though I know in my physical body I will see God again. So that's an ideal that's going to cause some, when you know that you know that you know that, and you can come to know that, just like you know other things that cause you to have a great level of belief. Um, those ideals, that, that foundation and a life that is based in that kind of foundation can't be moved. There may be some challenging things that happen but the self-betrayal, you're going to pull out of it. Joe pulled out of it. He pulled out of all of the events. You know, there's two things that I want to bring up here. One is there's the story of this, I'm going to say it, bet between God and the devil that God, Job won't betray his ideals. And, and then there's the other side of that story that Job says, the thing I feared came upon me. The thing I feared came upon me. So where his focus went, that's where his results went. Um, so we have two different things going on here. There's two different sides of that. It doesn't negate Job. And we can use both of those to learn some truth and some things about that, some principles. All right. So um, anyways, just my whole point is that spiritual side. So going back to this. In a world of entropy, it's easier to self-betray when you don't have a powerful idea to live by. The most powerful idea is a more complete truth and understanding. Would you agree with that? That your ideal is going to become more powerful, the more complete your understanding, and the more truths, the more principles. So in most cases, it's easy to see the lack of judgment in in somebody's judgment so when somebody and we can say that with our kids if you've been a parent in most cases it's easy to see the lack of judgment when perceiving things from a more accurate perspective it's easy to be able to judge somebody and in, in their lack of judgment when we can see from a more accurate perspective in most cases that's a parent child perspective and we could go down to the age not a teenager even go down to the judgment of a toddler we could see their lack of judgment because they don't have an accurate perspective maybe on, on gravity. A toddler doesn't have an accurate perspective on gravity or force, right? And, and, and what force can do, a car driving down the road. A toddler doesn't have that perception of ju you know, <clears throat> jumping out in front of a car and what that force could do to the child's physical body but the parent does. Well, it doesn't just stop there. Those are some of the most basic. What Solomon says is go way beyond that basic understanding. Get some, under, get some real understanding, all right? And, and those are spiritual understandings. So if you want a life of financial and time freedom, you don't work a job, that's for sure. But somebody who doesn't have the understanding of leverage and passive residual income, 
they'll continue to pursue a job trying to get the results which are financial freedom and time freedom but they're never going to get them i was watching a thing that popped up on my youtube yesterday with robert kiyosaki and how it says and and people in the comments for that youtube they were saying they never taught me about you know true financial freedom building a, a financial wealth they never taught that in school and so people are working a job wanting to accomplish their dreams their dreams which takes wealth and financial freedom but they're never going to get that in a job and you don't work your job harder to get that which is what most people do is which is what i did i worked harder i worked longer hours but that didn't get me the financial freedom and the time freedom so do you see how you can see you can judge between things with the more complete truth and understanding and it doesn't stop with financial freedom with our compensation plan <clears throat> there are truths to life that we want to know that will give us the more unspeakable joy so those are the things that wallace waddles is teaching the science of getting rich bob proctor said you were born rich they're not talking about money they're not talking about working more hours they're talking about these principles that give you a, a greater understanding the, and so if we resist who dave's trying to say god is and i'm not trying to say who god is you're all gonna have to discover who god is for yourself but it's in coming to understand god that the more unspeakable joys come and when we put ourselves in alignment or connection with the supreme which is god and and, and knowing and and in the scriptures it says you're on a course that pleases god right when you know you're on a course that pleases god that's where a greater joy is experienced but it's not because you know you're pleasing god it's because of the results that come from being on that correct course It's the results that come from being in alignment with principles, wisdom, and understanding. So then those results are more like rowing downstream, listen to this, in a world where most people are compelled to row upstream. Most people are compelled to row upstream because they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the truth. And in a, in a physical world that we're in, it might look like you have to row upstream. What I appreciate and what I'm grateful for about the science of getting rich is it taught me otherwise. It all came back to, it all comes down to this right here. Efficient actions on a mental level versus only efficient actions while self be trained on a physical level. When you have the wrong thoughts and feelings going through your mind while you're doing the right actions in the physical world, that's rolling upstream. And most people are rolling upstream because they don't get it. And you've got to have a complete understanding that will drive you through that entropy through the challenges that you're going to face through the nose through the rejection through your biological rhythm being low what caused dave to do an efficient action this morning was because of my ideals why didn't i just type in on the screen hey it's memorial day um we're gonna not do this zoom this morning i could have totally and easily have justified doing that which would have been based on the way i felt what caused me to go beyond that? Because look, I'm going to pay my bills whether I do it or not. The money is going to keep coming in. I already got paid. Why didn't I self-betray? Where most of you are self-betraying in that moment. Most of you are self-betraying in that moment. I'm, I'm doing your isogenics business consistently and with excellence consistently day after day most of you are self betraying you're, you're not even doing the physical actions you found a good reason to justify 
which is not going to lead you towards the goal. So again, why am I going to read from the wisdom of Job? Because I believe that has a bigger part to do with why I didn't justify where you do justify. And I'm not pointing fingers, you guys. I just want to make this clear and contrasted. And you can either accept that and, and have a resolve around that. But the resolve isn't going to come from you just making the resolve. It's going to come from your ideals. It's the ideals that are pulling me through the times that I don't justify where you do justify. And I don't know if you're justifying. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir sometimes. And then some, sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to anybody but the choir when it comes out and through me and, and me wanting to get points across. So you have to just decide how you're going to receive it on your end anyways. So let's just read a little bit more from this and then we'll jump back into the book. Um, so this is from the wealth of wisdom and he goes on. He's not just scripture based and neither am I. Job happens to be in the old Testament, which we call scriptures, but he go in, the, in a couple chapters next, he goes into Solomon. Then he goes into Socrates um, and then he goes into the Wizard of Oz. There's a chapter right here on the Wizard of Oz. He's going to find some truth in the Wizard of Oz. Some wisdom that he's going to pass on to me. And I can't wait to get to these, these different chapters. And he goes into the imagination. Um, there was one that I saw that I just can't wait to get to. It's further on. Um, Dave, can I make a comment, please? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say to your point, I did not either feel like coming on your call. It's the holiday, whatever. But I believe that I always, always get value from your calls. And so I came to your call with the belief, to your point, your belief is bigger and more religious. I believed in you. And I just want to say thank you. And I'm seeing comments from other people that said, you're, we're so glad you're here. And I, I would be willing to bet that most people here believe the same thing I do, that we get so much value. And that's what pulled us here every time, even if we may not feel like being here. Thank you. Is that Ingrid? Who say that? That is, that is. And I, so I just want to thank you for your belief system and, and everything you're saying is spot on. So thank you for your understanding and sharing that with us. You're welcome and thank you, Ingrid. Um, okay, yeah, thank you. I, I, I truly appreciate that. You don't know how much I appreciate that. Um, okay, rather than get sidetracked, because I could get sidetracked by that. Um, um, I, I didn't mean to, but I just no, really no, no, to no. Know. It's, it's yeah. all good. No, it's beautiful. Um, thank you. Um, there's a lot of thoughts that's going through my mind, but it, rather than focus on that, I. Again, thank you so much for that. Um, so, so let me just read from here. Job was confronted with another question. If a man dies, shall he live again? This is, well, he goes on to say, many people in the world do not know the answer to this famous question. Really? Like, I, that's to me one of the first pearls of great price that I would want to find is what's the purpose for me being born? Mark Twain brings up that question. You know, there's two important days in our life, the day you were born and the day discovering why you were born. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of misleading information out there that gets people off track. And then they just kind of, it doesn't really settle with them. It doesn't sit right with them. And so they just kind of flounder around not knowing where to go, right? And I am so grateful for the teachers that have showed up in my life. Like, I don't take credit for what you say, Ingrid, I, I have, have an appreciation, but I don't look at that as that's me that you're giving that, that appreciation to. It's the information that other people have taught me that has settled with me. It is true. And it's producing the results that I want in my life. It's giving me that unspeakable joy. And I'm so grateful for that. So I read direct, not in, an undis, not in a disrespectful way, but in a humility, humble uh way that serves me. It does serve me. I appreciate hearing those things. It does light me up, but I redirect it to the source from which those good things came that you're directing it to. That's not me. It's the things that I discovered and where the good things come from. 
which in the chapter of gratitude in Wallace Waddle's book says, you don't ever want to sever yourself from the source from which great things come. And that's directing your gratitude in the right direction. So uh, if, if a man dies, shall he live again? Many people in the world do not know the answer to this famous question, and yet almost no other could be as important. There are some who would give a negative answer. See, my ideals built around the truth that I discovered, and I can't pass that on to you. It's the oil in the lamps of the five wise virgins that they couldn't share with the five foolish. You can't give that understanding and that belief to people. You can try and help them to become exposed to it, and then they're going to do what they do with it, right? And so there are some who would give a negative answer. There are some who believe in an eternal life on a basis so weak and indefinite that it has very little power to upgrade their lives. That's worth reading again, because this is where it's going to begin and end for you and what you're gonna do and your resolve around it. There are some who believe in an eternal life on a basis so weak, W-E-A-K, so weak and indefinite that it has little power to upgrade their lives. As their wisdom in knowing about our, uh, as there is wisdom in knowing about our pre-mortal state, so who we were before we came to this life, this mortal life on this earth, so there, as there is wisdom in knowing about our pre-mortal state, so there is wisdom in knowing about our eternal post-mortal state. If you have a weak understanding around that, then your ideals are going to be weak. How could they not be? How could they not be? They would be based in a, in a world of entropy where everything decays. So God himself said, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. What do I know about that? What do I know about how Adam brought death into the world and Christ brought a resurrection into the world? So we live before we came here. Uh, Wordsworth, what's his name? Um, is it William Wordsworth? He says, our sleep is but a, for our, our birth is but a forgetting. Our birth is but a forgetting. There's like this veil that we can vaguely feel through. So our birth is but a forgetting, but our life star had elps, had come from elsewhere. I, I, I can't say the poem word for word. But our sleep is just but a forgetting of who we really are and who we were before we came here. So, um, so God has ordained the literal bodily resurrection and the eternity of the family relationship and how much wiser we are in handling our problems when we know and understand the answer to these questions, how much wiser we are. The reason I got up today was for you guys. We're a family unit. We were a family unit because of who we were and where we were before we came here. And I don't have so much as a forgetting as some people do or a disbelief or even a negative answer to who are we and where did we come from? I have a more profound understanding and truth of that question. Where did we come from? But yeah, we're a family unit. And so now, feel the enthusiasm of the faith of Job who lived many generations before the resurrection was initiated upon this earth. So he lived before that, that moment happened where the resurrection was made possible. So he said, Oh, that my words were now, listen, he says, listen to his enthusiasm. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though my skin worms destroy this body, yet my flesh in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So there's this purpose to life that, that Job has an understanding of, and we can all get to that understanding. And I believe that each principle we learn gets us closer and closer to that understanding. 
yeah, we're building an isogenics business. This blueprint is about an isogenics business, but it's also about creating good and the law of compensation and progress. But it's not just progress in the material world, this world of entropy that we can build something with. We can put brick upon brick and put the mortar in there and build really something great and something that's worth our time while being here, worthy of us, but it goes beyond that. For Dave, it goes way beyond what's going to be built in this physical world. Even though it's great and it's awesome and it's producing results that are awesome, it goes way beyond that. There's, there's results that are more awesomer behind the ideal of why I wake up every morning and I do what I do. So he goes on to say, and, and it's about a page left, there's some very profound ideals that he's going to bring out right here. <clears throat> In order to increase the quality of wisdom within himself, Job spent a great deal of time meditating about the values of life. He asked himself some very important questions and insisted upon training himself to give the right answers. You guys hear that? He spent a great deal of time meditating on the more important questions of life, but not negating life. I he didn't negate life. I'm getting some background noise from somebody. If you can make sure you're muted out. Hey, Dave, why don't, you, why don't you make me um, uh, co-host and I'll manage the microphones for you. Okay. There we go. Okay, got it. Thanks, Malcolm. Okay, so he didn't negate building something in this physical world. Some people would. In pursuit of the spiritual, they would negate the physical. That would be erroneous. That would be negating. That would not be taking advantage of the opportunities that you have to grow and develop, negating success in this world. They go hand in hand. So he asked himself some very important questions and insisted upon training himself to give the right answers. That's those maxims that we come up with in any, mo any given moment. This procedure and the questions themselves might serve us as advantageously as they did him. If we go about it in the same way, Job said, but where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? He might also have said, how can we find and develop both of these important qualities? What a wonderful asset we ourselves could have if we would get a proper testimony about these important subjects for ourselves instead of the weak attitude we might acquire by allowing the answers to skate too lightly across the surface of our minds. These more, is poignant the right word? In-depth spiritual questions about life that Socrates and, and uh, um, Who's the other guy <clears throat> from the Greeks? Socrates and uh, <clears throat> you probably know his name. So there's Plato yeah, they thought about. and Socrates. Aristotle, yeah, Aristotle, Socrates, these, these great thinkers, right? They didn't let things skate too lightly across their minds. And right now you're being given the opportunity if you hadn't already been exposed to it to think about more deeply. So Job asked another important question when he said, can a man be, pro listen to this. This is where we combine the two, the world we're living in right now. But being in the world and not of the world is not what most people think it is. It's understanding these important spiritual aspects to the world we live in and applying them so that we can have success. Job asked another important question when he said, can a man be profitable unto God as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself. So we look at sharp business people who are wise in the world of business and they're very profitable to themselves and the corporation. Maybe to a few people in the corporate world, they're, they're adding value, right? And in a way they are adding value to other people who they're providing a living for. So Job, Job asked another important question when he said, can a man be profitable unto God as he, that is wise, may be profitable unto himself. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or is it a gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? So if a man does the right thing, 
can he be very profitable unto himself as well as to God? And to me, it's a resounding yes. Could we get you, if we could get you to replace one shake a day, replace one meal a day with a shake, could it profoundly change your life? It's a resounding yes, if it's an isogenic shake, right? So if I could find the principles of building success, would it be as profitable and profoundly in how I serve God? In the, in, in, in the magnitude that I could serve God? It's a resounding yes. It's a very profound and very resounding yes from the rooftops if you do it the right way. So if a man, okay, so Joe, Joe points out that man knoweth not the price of wisdom. He said, it cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with gold or ophir, he said. The price of wisdom is above rubies. You guys, it's not one or the other in serving God or having success in the world. They're synonymous. They're synonymous. When you understand the true and living God and what the purpose of life is, you were born not thrown into this world to not be a part of it. So we can easily understand this idea because while wisdom can produce wealth, wealth cannot produce wisdom. So when I said earlier that it's easy to see um, in most cases, it's easy to see the lack of judgment, the fallibility, the foolishness when perceiving things from a more accurate perspective. I see very religious people, very faithful, very faith-based driven people who have very foolish judgment when it comes to the world and their engagement in it because they don't understand the true and living God and the purpose for why they're here and what they can do while they're here. And the success, the worldly success. Yes, worldly success. In the eyes of the world, it would be very profound success. You would get accolades for your success. But at the same time, serve God just as meaningfully? Absolutely. That's why I call Isogenics a divinely inspired company because I have not seen anything so profoundly and so equally allow people to connect the two together, to connect the two together. And what does that mean for me as the individual? And what does that mean for me to help other people see that? Well, that has everything to do with my ideals and my beliefs of where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. It has everything to do with that. It can't be separated. So <clears throat> what a great, okay, so we can easily understand this ideal because while wisdom, okay, can, wisdom can produce wealth, wealth cannot produce wisdom. Therefore, wisdom is greater than wealth. Wisdom can also produce love and righteousness. What a great bargain if it would be if we could buy unerring wisdom with money, with labor, with education, or even with our own blood, sweat, toil, and tears to help us get the right answer we ought to meditate more upon Job's question and try to discover the answer to this important proclamation. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? If we could personally get some good answers to those questions, we would be well on our way to the most outstanding personal joy. As a proof of his own wisdom, Job said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is, is understand and let me read that again. As a proof of his own wisdom, Job said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So many people have separated the two and erroneously look at the two as being separate. Even in, it's, it's been twisted and it's a warped separating um, religion and state. That has been so twisted and warped by the devil. They, they're not separate. They're the same. They have to be synonymous. That's how we became so great was this, I'm not going to say fear of God, but this love of God in our hearts, in our pursuit 
of happiness. As a proof of his own wisdom, Job said, okay, so he might also have said, obedience to God is wisdom. Living the principles of the gospel is wisdom. What's the gospel? Everything about your life is the gospel. Well, no, let me rephrase that. The gospel is applying the truths, the immutable truths to your life and putting them into action. That's the gospel. The gospel is the truth. It's revealing the truths that are there, the immutable universal principles of truth. The gospel is revealing those and then working out how to apply them in our lives, in our pursuit on a day-to-day -day basis, not separating them. You would never want to separate them. There is a downward entropy of force that is trying to separate them and it never rests. It works 24 seven. And we're seeing the results of people being fooled by that force. We can see the lack of judgment. Obedience to God is wisdom. Obedience to principle is wisdom. Living the principles of the gospel is wisdom. Righteous industry is wisdom. To me, the more we can understand these principles, amazing customers who are being blessed beyond measure, amazing business partners who are being blessed beyond measure, this is righteous industry. And we can't forget, lest we forget, the blessings that flow into our lives because of that. The financial freedom, the great wealth, the great financial freedom and the impact that it is making. Isogenics, I don't know another vehicle at this point in time that is a more righteous industry for the individual equally across the board. And like Laura St. John says, Isogenics will support, um, what did she say, human potential. What is our potential? I don't know. <laughs> we, we haven't seen it yet. But we're able to unlock that one step at a time, one precept, one principle at a time and apply it. I wish that I were more obedient to the next principle than I am. More than just about anything else, God, our eternal father, Heavenly Father wants each one of us to build solid qualities in our characters. He wants us to be fully informed, fully righteous, fully thoughtful. He wants us always to use good judgment with love in our hearts for good things. After Job had passed all his tests, he was given twice as much in material things as he had before. He was also much wiser. The record says, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginnings. And so God will similarly bless us if we are diligent in developing the excellence of our wisdom. So we could take Job's story. Was there a bet? Was there a test that was undeserving of Job? Because for us, what we think about, we bring about. God isn't doing the test with us. The test is already self-existent in our lives that we already are in the test. We're in the middle of the test, but it's not God who's in control of our results, both good and bad. We are in control of them. And maybe that's what the story is trying to represent. So there's a lot of different ways and perspectives and dynamics that you can get out of the, I, tr I believe tr Job was a tr real person. Jesus referred to him while he was alive. So I believe he's a real person. But these, these things that we can take and those dynamics that we can take and look at, how can we utilize them, create maxims off of those and create characteristics and behaviors that will serve us because we were exposed to them, All right? So what time are we at? Uh, we'll jump back into Wallace Waddles and, and gratitude, the chapter on gratitude right here, um, you know, and and how I like what he says here. This is a maxim that has forever stayed with me from this book. Um, if it is a new thought to you that gratitude brings your whole mind into closer harmony with the creative energies of the universe, consider it well. <laughs> I've said that in my mind over and over in, in, in the heated moment. Consider it well, Dave, what you're thinking right now. 
consider it well. If your thoughts produce things in the tangible material world, consider it well what you're thinking right now. Is it serving me or is it not serving me? So going, you know, just in, in let's open this up for discussion, just in um, bringing up that whole chapter from The Wealth of Wisdom by Sterling W. Sills. It has a very profound effect on my ideals. Why I got on the Zoom this morning, rather than putting a note, hey, it's Memorial Day, enjoy the day, and we'll meet again next week. Because that's what my physical body feels. And like the cat and the boy who was leaving for school, didn't want to go to school that day, I told that story before, little kid getting ready for school, didn't want to go to school, looked at the cat, was jealous of the cat laying in the, the window, windowsill didn't have to do anything could just sit there and not experience anything and and uh you know not have to do anything not fight against that downward entropy the cat didn't have to fight against the downward pull and here the kid was being forced to get dressed and go off to school and then he runs in from school slams the door mom mom guess what happened today and he looks over at that cat and it was still laying in the windowsill didn't get to experience anything yeah, I didn't have to fight and, and that discipline and that energy that it takes to fight against the downward pull, but the cat didn't get to experience and have the enthusiasm that that kid did coming home from school and slamming the door shut, excited to tell his mom about what happened that day, All right? So what is it that causes me to do that again and again in 15 years now? I, I, I will say without fail, yeah, there's been some mistakes, that I've had to brush myself off and get back up. But for 15 years, I haven't failed. Unfailingly, I've gotten back up and have stayed focused on the same, same goal. Well, not the same goal. Well, the same bigger goal, for sure. The same bigger goal that I have that comes from the beliefs that I've internalized and that I've disciplined myself to, like he said in the book. He trained himself to think a certain way about certain things. All right. So uh, I believe that sharing out of that book, that chapter, I, I believe it will take some of your lives to the next level because of how you're going to focus on and build that ideal that goes above and beyond this physical world, but it doesn't exclude it. It incorporates it on a much more meaningful, much more powerful foundation. Because I put two and two together. The principles of isogenics bless people's lives in every area of their life, if they'll allow it. And some of us have. All right, so let's open this up for a discussion. And um, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say, what you're thinking. And um, can people unmute themselves? Did I, let me just un, you guys gotta be quiet. And, uh, okay. All right, you should be able to unmute yourselves. I'll go back and read the chats. I do um, after we sign off. But uh, anybody want to share anything? I, I will if nobody else has. I've already made a comment, but I'm not sure. Oh, go ahead. Know. Well, one of the things in um, I love everything you say, and and that we can create our own reality. I was just putting it in the chat, but. If I know other people might have cycles, and I certainly go through this, but as you were talking today, I realized we have this power, this connection to God. Why do we accept that there's cycles? Let's be, let's, I want to continue to think that I'm um, connected always and aligned with God and His principles, and I have this 100% great feeling all day. I don't <laughs> right now, but I want to. So, um, I just have to get the discipline of, of thinking about that so that I can feel good all the time and not feel like, like I did this morning. What do you yeah. You, do you feel like you have a greater resolve? There's a greater power within you. you. There's a sense of something that the resolve is greater than it maybe previously have been. Yes. Or, or it reminds us and we reconnect to it again. We've had that resolve 
in our lives before. We felt it, but we didn't quite understand it. We couldn't direct it. We couldn't build upon it. You know, and, and I feel like the principles that we, I'm not trying to tell you guys who your God is. We all have the same God. You have to discover who God is, right? Um, and he's not different. Your God can't be different than my God. They have to be the same. And it's in understanding these truths that we come to a oneness in that understanding. But again, I'm not trying to tell you who God is. You're going to have to discover that for yourself. All I can do is just maybe teach some of these truths that have been revealed to me that I know that I know are truths. I've tested them. And you can come to know a truth and, and not abandon it because you know. And, and, and it's in that that we get this resolve. Like you said, not these biological rhythms get the best of us. You'll still have the biological rhythms, but they won't get the best of you. You'll be victorious over them where in the past we haven't. And that becomes oh. because of the ideals and the beliefs that we have. Oh, and it's I a very that. powerful life. Thank you for that clarity. Well, a, a dog has biological rhythms it can't control. Oh, what? You broke up a little bit there. A dog has biological rhythms that it can't control. We, we Every, can, uh, plants do, right? We see plants go through their biological rhythms. They, they, don't, they don't have a choice. We, we have a choice, right? So yeah. the point of, of uh, self-betrayal uh, where, where uh, you know, Dave wakes up and, oh man, I, I, I just got back from 14 hours of driving and it's Memorial Day and everybody's off. Everybody's, nobody's working. Right, and 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 uh, why why don't I just why don't I just tell them hey why don't you guys celebrate Memorial Day like real people instead of uh, crazy uh, fanatical entrepreneurs um, and uh, why don't you just celebrate like the normal people okay and and um, you know and, and I my what self betrayal looks like to me. This pity party, this feeling sorry for myself, thinking, "Oh, I've worked so hard." You know, uh, uh, last week uh, I, I, I put in four people. That's a lot, Dave, right? And then, and then, and then Willie comes along, and Digna, and Carrie, and Doctor J. In the past. A month, those four have put in 40 enrollments. 40. So, and, and I'm going to lay in bed and feel sorry for myself because I put in four last week. No. This is a gift. We, you know, here we are holding on to something that builds the immune system that you can do from home, right? And that builds your character. How, what, what part of this aren't people getting? This is wonderful. We have a gift. It, this is never going to happen in the history of network marketing. You know, and the company we're working for is generous and they're not putting on celebration this summer, which means they've got a ton of bonus money. They're not just going to keep that money from celebration. They're going to give it out in bonuses. You know that, Dave. They, that's what they do. So they, they're coming up. They have these contests that are incredible. And all we have to do is go out and help people that are scared, you know, that, that, uh, that um, don't, don't know how they're going to make money now. You know, there's lots of people out there that are, lots of business owners that are, that are Clothes that aren't able to operate the way we operate, right? So we have this gift of of a robust, astounding immune system, right? That's going to deal with this contagion that's going on, and we can do it all from home, right? The home-based business we don't have to have an office, right? And 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 you get to develop your character. It's not going to work 
then people aren't going to follow you unless you're Christ-like. It's a discipleship program on steroids. Malcolm to develop, right? Which means when I wake up this morning, I, I cleansed yesterday, so I'm full of energy. Right? And, uh, and, and, you know, instead of goofing off, I can go to work. I, I can do my 10, 10, 10. And, and I, you know, I didn't get to my affirmations, but I did my workout, right? And, and I have, a, have an incredible celebrate freedom. This business is about freedom, guys. Today is freedom day. Today is where we celebrate that freedom's not free. Right? And, and, and here, uh, I can do whatever I want. I, I, don't, I don't have a boss. It's free. I can get the motor home and go to Yosemite. Or, well, not, I don't know if, I don't know if, I don't know if Yosemite's open. Yet. But there's lots of other places. <laughs> you know, it's incredible. What a life. Your, your microphone's picking something. You guys hear that with Malcolm every time he talks? Are you hearing a... How's are that? You, Is that any better? Oh, that's much better, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I had my notebook on my computer pad and the, and the microphone. <laughs> I, I screwed up. Thank you for mentioning because uh, No, we can hear you. Just uh, had to yeah, no, no, I had to concentrate. No, no, I had... Uh, I was taking notes on my computer pad, and uh, I... Yeah, otherwise, I have to reach over and uh, above my computer to make notes, and my arm gets sore. <laughs> well, Malcolm, you're always such a, a great example of what the practical application is, and and Sherry, you know, being transparent with what you're going through, so many people can relate to that. I see the comments of people appreciating, you know, what you share, because you do that. You take it, and then you're like, so here's how I use that. Here's how I did that yesterday. Whatever it was we were talking about. And, and it, if, I, if I was building my business, if, if, if I was starting out building my business and I was struggling, what I would recognize from what, like the things that Malcolm is saying, I would, I would take like an evaluation, like a personal evaluation. And am I behaving in that way? Am I working through, or is that the time when I'm self-betraying? Is that when I'm not making those phone calls? You know, and, and the fact that you enrolled four people, in spite of all of the downward entropy, that pull that you're feeling, like the kid going to, to school that morning and the cat gets to lay there, that pity party that you, you know, you use that phrase a lot because that's the feeling that you get that you're working through. You're familiar with, he's familiar with that, you guys, and so are all of us. We're familiar with that pity party that we want to give ourselves, but he doesn't self-betray in that pity party because there's a set of ideals. There's some values that Malcolm's incorporated and there's some wisdom in knowing the choice he makes right now is gonna end up producing the results. You know enough about cause and effect with the decisions you're making, right Malcolm? In the midst of that pity party. Well, sense? and the only cure I know of for pity party is gratitude. That's, that's the only thing I know that will pull me out is, is to, you know, I was listening to Jim Rohn this morning and he's saying, he, he's saying, isn't it, isn't it interesting that, that people in our country that only make $10,000 a month or $10,000 a year are considered poor. And he says, most of the world would consider people uh, that are making that money rich. Right. And uh, in Bangladesh, you know, you compared it to Bangladesh, they make $63 a year, right? You know, this is a while ago, but- No, but, I just heard something just yesterday, like uh, the average for in a third world country is like a dollar nine a day. Yeah. A dollar nine. And I'm, and I'm worried that I'm not making 2,000 a week. <laughs> That's my goal, you know? Right now, a short-term goal, gotta, gotta have 2,000 a week, you know? Most, most people in the world can't imagine that. They, they just can't. Who is this crazy person, right? And, 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 and he, he doesn't even leave the house. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, going 10 days without starting my car, you know? It's amazing. And we are so blessed, you know? And 
and, and I get up in the morning and, and I'm, I think like most people, and maybe I'm feeling sorry for myself a little bit. And fortunately, after that gratitude book, the magic book, when I open my eyes, I immediately something, think of something I'm grateful for and thank God, right? That, I picked that up from that book, right? But, but, but my go-to, uh, you know, like a dog, is, is pity party, is, is, is thinking about what's wrong and, 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 and what, what are the problems? And oh, rah, 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 I gotta get up and oh, I'm gonna go on the Zoom. And, rah, 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 rah. and you know, um, and, and then when I do my 10 gratitude list, right? I start to come out of that and I start to realize what a gift and a blessing I have, you know, and, and, and I can interrupt that, you know, people consider it a rhythm. I guess it is a rhythm. You know, we're, we're kind of like animals in a way, but we have a choice, you know? And, and, uh, and, and so I start, I start looking and, and, you know, Willie hit um, uh, 20 cycles. Digna was right behind him at 19. That's incredible for the time they've been in this business. I, I, unbelievable, you know, uh, extraordinary. He's got somebody to, he's got people to run with and they're running hard. It's fantastic, you know, and, and, and he, he's worked his butt off. You know, he's, he's in a hotel room with Digna instead of, instead of celebrating Memorial Day, he lives in Florida. What do you mean? Aren't you going to the, the beach, Willie? What, what are you crazy? You can, you, you live in Florida, go to the beach, right? No, he goes to a hotel room and he makes calls. They're, they're, they're doing a, they hired a babysitter to take, to take care of their kids to do this because they see this as a gift. And the reason is because, uh, you know, this is why I'm so fond of people who have had a third world experience, people who really have seen poverty with their own eyes, right? Like in Puerto Rico, okay? I mean, Puerto Rico is kind of, you know, it's an American ter territory, but it borders on, on third world, right? Kind of like Mexico, okay? So Willie and Digna see the world differently. I admire that. I admire immigrants that come here and, and all they see are streets of gold. You know, it's unbelievable. We are so lucky, you know? Yeah. It's the resolve, you guys. <clears throat> it's the resolve. They have a resolve and there's reasons, there's different dynamics for that resolve and we talked about a lot of them today. But I was just making a little graph here. Values, your goals, what's exciting to you, why do you want it? You know, we could just add more and more words to this that make that resolve. You know, <clears throat> um, your beliefs. Um, you know, everybody does what they believe is going to serve them. Everybody does. I do what I believe is going to serve me. What am I going to get out of it? That's why I do what I do. So, um, you know, just in closing again, thank you, Malcolm. Anybody else want to add anything or share anything before we end the Zoom today? Just thank you again for being here, Dave and Malcolm and everyone else. Um, such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you all. Hi, Dave. Awesome, Dave. Kevin hey, Ryan. Kevin. Sorry, I can't get the picture thing to work, but um, I just want to thank you for the portion you talked about about Job today and wisdom. It's very close to my heart. And I'm working, as you know, with seniors. And actually, I'm trying to get that portion of seniors that still look at life as an adventure. And I call them wisdom warriors. That's my name for that, that subset. And this was very helpful for me uh, and my journey. And it's an exciting journey. And we'll talk more about that some other time. But I'm really working hard. I would try and create senior citizens, change senior senators, senior centers names to wisdom centers, not senior centers, wisdom centers. Because <laughs> that's where it, and I'm excited about that. And, and, and I have a whole portion of it. Isogenics is very clear in my mind, contributing to that. So thank you. And I'm glad we all did get up and decide to come to work. <laughs> and I was gonna say, you guys are all the, uh, I mean, we are preaching to the choir here. Yeah. We're the ambitious <laughs> ones, you know, or the crazy ones. Yeah, but. <laughs> so I wanna thank you. 
thank all of you guys for showing up today. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, it, uh, you guys did it. I mean, you were victorious over the downward entropy today. So. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, Joy to all. Thanks, all, right. all right. Thanks. Remember our veterans today, guys. Remember the veterans. Dave. Amen. Dick Sauter is a veteran. I'm writing, I'm calling Dick right after I hang up here. <laughs> Amen to that. All right. Anybody else before we go? Thank Dick for me. Man. Free the ultimate Man. freedom that we enjoy. <laughs> what a gift. Yes. What a gift. All right, you guys, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you. I'll be doing the Zoom tonight. We'll have the Zoom tonight, Forever Pack, and uh, invite some guests. And thanks, you guys. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Malcolm. Peace. Thanks, everyone. Peace out. <laughs>